No, no music. Hello, everyone. We thank God for this wonderful time. We are about to start now by special grace of God. This is Demio Share and Care, whereby we come together to deliberate on so many problems that are facing Christians. And we believe this particular channel has been helping a lot of souls. And we want to bless so many souls again today as we go live. Sorry for the feedback because uh, USA, we just jump up concerning our time. And that is why a little change concerning Nigeria and UK time. But all the same, we are still going to enjoy the name of the Lord today. It's going to be exciting. And I can't wait to discuss this particular topic that we have today. And I'm very sure everybody, we love it so much. The Lord has prepared a lot of people just to be part of this particular episode. And we are going to glorify the name of the Lord for this wonderful thing. So as the, uh, the, 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 our engineer just put a lot of things together, we are about to start by special grace of God. Let me quickly introduce all our guests so that they can come up. We pray and we start right away. And the first person I'm going to introduce to us by special grace of God today is one of our sister. Wow, she is a worship leader. And uh, the Lord has been using her so many places. And uh, by the time you, you, you see him, you see her, you'll be able to know that the Lord has been in her life. Actually, she, she, got, uh, she had a master's in biochemistry at the University of Ibadan. And by special grace of God, she's the registered nurse right now. And also, she's not lazy. And she's still going on in this professional thing. And currently, she's working on a doctor of nursing practice. She's happily married with children. And I'm very sure she's a very good example of faith to our generation. Mm -hmm. And there's no other person than Dickness Tokpe Ajani. God bless you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mommy. I do appreciate the opportunity to be on the program. It's a pleasure. Thank you, yeah. Matthew. God bless you. You're welcome. And uh, we, we, we are used to our pastor on, on site all the time. But today is going to play another part. It's going to play the part of a father because we want to deal with a very sensitive topic. And yes, in fact, you already know him already, but I'll still introduce him because of some people that are joining us for the first time. Um, is no other person than the senior pastor and founder of Treasure Inclay International in Manchester, and is also a data software application developer. He's happily married with children, and we thank God for his life. He has been a testimony to this particular channel all the time. You always say him, and that is no other person than Pastor Solomon Obison from Manchester, UK. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. Um, such a great joy again to be around. And um, yeah, I hope we we get on the ball and have a nice time together. Blessings. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. And the last person I'm going to call is a father. You always see him on this channel, uh, but he wasn't around. And that was why you didn't see him for, for some time. But he's back now and we thank God for his life. He's a testimony to his generation. You know, is a minister of God. Is the is the pastor in charge of Christ Apostolic Church Riverview in Tampa, he, in uh, in uh, U, uh, in U, USA here. And we have been thanking God for his life. He has just retired. You can imagine he has worked a if a longer time as a champion of Saint Joseph Hospital in Tampa here. And the Lord has been really, really, really blessing him. He's happily married with children as well. And I have the privilege of calling our daddy, Pastor John Arossi. God bless you, daddy. Bless you. Thank you, everybody that is joining. It's a pleasure to be here again after a long time. And I pray in the name of Jesus that all will be well today. We will be able to reach out and the Lord will speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, sir. You are all welcome. All our guests, I, I just say hi to everybody. I know the time has affected a lot of people. I'm very sure I try to pass on the message, but it might not get to people. But all the same, whatever we do today, it will be replayed back by so many people. So um, 
if people joining us, or I, I just say you are welcome. If you are doing a replay or you are with us in live, we thank God for your life and we thank God for all the time that we call on to you and you always listen to us. Now, as we, you know, this is a uh, Christian channel. We need to start with prayer because with God, all things are possible. So I will turn on uh, Daddy Arosi to give us a short prayer as we start today's episode. Daddy. Gracious Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity that we can come and rub minds on issues that affect every one of us. Blessed Holy Spirit, we pray that you take absolute control for the time we are spending together and will arrive at decisions or conclusions that will better the lot of many of us. We give you all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, Daddy. God bless you. Thank you. So, for people that are here for the first time, either you are on live or you are playing back, it doesn't really matter. I know it's going to bless a lot of people out there. This is Baby Oshia Rankia. My name is Baby Sola Oluwa Yimika. I'm by special grace of God and your host for this particular program. This is a particular program that we deliberate on different type of problems that are facing Christians every day. You know, there are so many things that are sensitive in the church of God and we don't want to discuss about it. But on this channel, we have the privilege to, to, you know, to discuss a lot of things, to get solutions to all the problems. And we're using only the Bible. Today is another wonderful topic that we want to deliberate on. And what is it? How to train our children in a Christian way without over parenting. You know, there are so many things that we need concerning like I said in the preview of the last video you heard that there's nobody that knows how to train a child. It is only when God gives us the advantage, the opportunity, the grace to do so. That is the, 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 the time we know how to do it. And today, there's a lot of, you know, secret that we're going to expose. We're going to let people know, you know, all, all the people out there, uh, all my guests, by special grace of God, the Lord has blessed them. And uh, I'm just using this period to pray and speak the authority to as many people as are still waiting on the foot of the womb, that the Lord Jesus will remember you for good in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall be a partaker. You are a parent already. Yeah, either you have your physical child or maybe you are, you are training a child. You are a mother, you are a father, and I'm so proud of you. So don't be let out. Don't say, oh, I don't have one, so I don't need to hear this. You need it because the Lord has put you there in order to bring somebody up. So you are a particle of this because your blessing is coming right away by special grace of God. I believe so much in that. Today, we're going to deliberate on a case study. Like you know, we always focus on the case study. And after the case study, we now talk generally so that people can learn on how to train our children in the way of the law without overparenting. Yes, we have been trying our best. Yes, a lot of things have been happening. Things are going wrong. Things are going right. This generation is going up and up. How do we cope? How do we train our children? And they still maintain the standard of the Bible. Uh, without wasting time, I quickly want us to go and see the case study for this particular month of March. And throughout this month, this is the topic we're going to treat. Next week will be question and answer just like that, like, like we normally do. So let's quickly go and watch our case study for today. Let's go there.
Yeah, um, we thank God. We, we know that a lot of people must have watched that particular case study, but we always bring it once in a while so that for people that are going to be watching us for the first time, that's why we always repeat it so that people can remember what the case study of this particular week is all about. Uh, we have already seen it, and uh, I'm very sure we have seen that this is a serious problem in the life of that particular sister she might not be the only one that is having that particular problem there may be a lot of thousands in the world today christian homes that are having the same problem they have tried their best they have prayed they nurtured that child from the beginning but they are still failing what is the problem so this case study is what we want to deal with right now by my guest uh speakers and after we finish then we do it generally so I'm going to call our deepness to be the first person to help us with, you know, solution. What is the solution to the sister? What can she do? How can she just help the situation? The, the, the husband is failing. He's not even helping. He doesn't want to help. And uh, we have a lot of fathers too. They are really stick to their work. They don't have the time. It's always mothers, mothers, mothers all the time. But we can say that a lot of people are in the house and uh, we are still going to deliberate on that so Dignes talk well what do you think the sister should do she's having problem and she, uh, even though she thought it's good it's too late is it too late it can can we still cancel her concerning things so that everything will be fine now that the son is going way wild is doing something else what do you think is the best solution as a parent thank you amen thank you very much ma'am I want to acknowledge the daddies in the house. It's, I mean, it's an honor to, you know, be here together with them. Thank you so much, our daddy, Pastor Piso, and uh, our daddy, Pastor Arosi. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. So, like, we just watched this case study, you know, like, the, like the, the sister Lizzie or the mommy said, you know, it's almost too late. But just like we started today, with God, nothing is impossible. You know, there's this passage we talk about, you know, when it comes to children that train up a child in the way of the Lord. And when he grows up, he will not depart from it. You know, when I was kind of thinking of that on that message, I mean, on that verse recently, I believe the Lord dropped in my heart that there are three parts to that passage. You know, the first part, train up a child, that's where we put in our own efforts, like the discipline, you know, the guidance, the boundaries and all those other things that we can do. But when they grow up, there's really nothing that we can do to make a child grow up. 
Bible says it will write his law upon their hearts. That is the part where we commit those children to God because he's the one that can really establish them in the things of the Lord. We can put in our own best, you know, but when they leave the house, what happens when we're not there? You know, we've all been youths at one point or the other. So it really takes God to bring up godly children. And that's really where I'm going to start from. This woman, there's a big problem in the house and it's not just about the son. There's a problem in our marriage between her relationship and her husband. And we just have to go back to God. She has to go back to God and pray. And I know she's prayed before, but this is not just like simple prayer. Bible says, you know, when Jesus was talking about a case, you know, that this one coming out or except by fasting and prayer. This is the type of prayer that, you know, this is a serious business. You are not just dealing with flesh and blood. You're dealing with principalities and powers in heavenly places that have come to attack your home, even through your husband or through your son. So you are looking at fasting and prayer. If it's going to be your pastor or a friend, you know, your sibling that you know can agree with you in prayer, you know, you will fast and you will seek the face of the Lord in prayer. Waking up in the middle of the night, this is serious prayer. And then you're going to start with yourself because you have to, you must have made some mistakes. I'm not blaming you. Because of the stress of raising up a child because your husband is not supporting you, there are some things you may have spoken that are not proper, even in front of the children. We, you know, we've all fallen, you know, pray before, you know, we, you really have to ask God, you know, for forgiveness. You know, you pray for wisdom. Bible says the wise woman builds up a home and the foolish one tears it down. You know, there's still something that women, you know, God has given us this grace that when we seek his face, it can give us wisdom for what to do. So you're praying for yourself. You're praying for your marriage. You're praying for your husband and you're praying for your son. And even after you do that, you now have to go back to your, I mean, to your husband and apologize. You know, you cannot say, you know, you, you haven't done something wrong, like said something bad, reacted, you know, in a negative way. Um, in my house, sometimes my husband calls me Mama Bear. <laughs> because it's like, you know, <laughs> the women, we have this, you know, control to determine the temperature of the house. You know, we, it, it depends on how we, you know, do things. That's how even the children, too, we do. That's how our husband will respond mm -hmm. to us. You have to go back to your husband, apologize, kneel down, whatever you need to do. You know your husband, ask him mm -hmm. to forgive. And tell him, you know, you really want to do this together. You need his help. You know, God can help you. If it's not going to come overnight and say yes, but you know you're still praying in the background, but you have to do the first thing make things right and then you go to your son to even your children just apologize there are times you may have compared him to the sisters like all your sisters are doing well look at you you know it's only you that we're having this problem over those kind of a mm -hmm. thing you know mm -hmm. you may have been to him in the wrong way you know you apologize how oh, come here i'm sorry oh you know you know you kind of you know your son is still your son no matter what you know you know what yeah. he has to do, how you can get to him you let him know you know we can do this together you know something else that i thought about i believe the lord laid upon my heart was apart from god is love you know, you have to show love. Love covers the multitude of sins. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to repair this thing, you cannot come from an attitude of condemnation, you know, of just, you know, just saying anything. You have to show love to your husband and respect, and you have to love your son. You know, there are times he will go out like that and come back home. You'll be waiting for him. Instead of, oh, where did you go and all this stuff? Because now we're, this, this one is not, you cannot use fire for fire at this stage. You are going to, you know, walk with love and God will give us the wisdom. I've waited for you. What's going on? You know, you try and find some time, you know, to spend some time with him, you know, talk to him, you know, you know, find ways to be able to reach him, even through God. And then I also thought, I believe the Lord laid upon my heart. There were three things. It was like God, love and work. And actually the God gave me like an acronym, acronym for those things. It was like glow, you know, God, love and work. You know, the Bible says that the idle hand is the devil's workshop. Mm hmm. We need to keep these children busy. I know at this stage, you know, it's probably kind of, you know, older. You might not be able to go and start joining like high school sports or something like that. But you know, you have to find something that both of you, it will be a lot of work that you have to do yourself, that you have to engage in. Even if it's joining maybe like a YMCA, going to the gym together, taking a walk together, learning how to ride a bicycle if you don't know, take a hiking, you know, volunteering at the soup kitchen. You know, there's things that you can do together. When you keep him busy, you know, find what he loves to do, you know, try and do those things gradually, gradually with the prayer in the background, you know, try and get him chores in the house. And it won't just be like you're focusing on him alone, like he's a problem child. You try and restore things, order in the house. You know, maybe the altar of the Lord has been neglected. You try and start back gradually, even if it's just on weekends, five minutes. 
when you're having sitting, sitting together for a meal you just pray one verse of prayer i know gradually try and get that order back you know into where, where it's supposed to be in the home so i believe you know with um, maybe this you know three things you're praying and fasting and you're trying to, to watch your own relationship with your husband you can repair where things have been broken down watch your relationship with your son and then you show love you don't condemn you know you try and bring him back up bring him back home and then you keep him busy together you do things together you spend time together you work together i pray, I pray that god you know will be able to bring some resolution thank you amen very much. thank you very much i know you are a blessing to your generation and i'm very sure we are still going to hear a lot of things from you I know so many people, you know, they will still hear this and they need it because we are brother keeper. We need to help ourselves. At times, we might not be the expert in training our children. And at times, we might even do it. And the child is doing contrary. But there are so many other little, little things that we neglect. You know, we just neglect it. We are ignorant of a little, little thing. And that's really affecting our home. I, I will call our pastor now, Pastor Bison, who is representing all fathers in there. Uh, we have a minister, in the, all, all of them are ministers, you can imagine, I'm so lucky. So I'm going to call on Pastor Solomon Obisho. What is the solution to this? Because this woman is already having this problem. Ignace Tokwe has already mentioned some, some parts that we need to follow, but I know Pastor Solomon, we still elaborate more on what is the solution to this particular home? Do they really have problems? How do they cope? How do they make this child to do the will of the Lord at the end of the day, not to be a son of perdition? There are so many children of us, Christian children, that are going the other way. How do we bring them back to salvation? How do we introduce them back to the Lord? How so many things that must have been wrong. How do we correct it? Is it too late to correct such a child? Or we just leave the child alone and let him just take position? Uh, Pastor Obison, I know you have a lot of things to tell us. Um, thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much for that wonderful contribution, Mrs. Ajani. Um, it, it shows you, you're a true mother. You are, you are a wonderful mother and you deserve to be celebrated. Um, um, and um, again, I want to recognize um, our very dear Reverend Rosella. God bless you, sir. Yes. Um, apologies. I will, me, I'm on the other side and I will, I, I'm a child of the elderly. Uh, and I will go down the route of um, being a father from the perspective of what i understand um there is a proverb that goes that says that you get to the market and you saw a lady carrying or you saw someone carrying something on their head almost falling down mm -hmm. you saw the head bent and every you shouted to the person ah your what you're carrying is bent Pardon me, I can't. If there was a way I could say it in Yoruba, it would have been a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. But the person carrying the load says to you, Don't worry about what I'm carrying on my head. Uh, but look at my legs because they are already bent. Mm. In other words, it is not the head, it is not what she's carrying that is the problem. It is what supports what she's carrying. Mm. That really, really is the problem. You see, in Psalms 11 and verse 3, it says, if the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing a righteous man mm -hmm. can do. And I'm going down the wire to play, or should I say to play the other side of Mrs. Ajani. I, you're a very good mother. You're a very lovely mom. Ah, you're, you're a very soft mommy. Um, I know your children are just having it, and they are having fun with you. Hmm. But if it were me, why are you blaming the boy? Why are you blaming the boy when the father that is meant to be the example? Hmm. You see, I believe that no child was born bad. Mm -hmm. No child. No child. It is what they have come to learn or understand. The benefits the the kind of um the kind of leeway you give to them what you allow them to get away with 
I believe that is what absolutely compose all their attitude and their personality. I believe this boy, and if you check out the um, the case in question, every time this woman tried to do something with the boy, the father will always come around and say, he's the prince of the house. He's going to be in charge. So why will somebody that will be in charge now begin to run around? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this goes a long way. Not And if you look at it, the result of it, let me just take it from here. The result of it was that there are two sets of children there. The female one that was trained by this woman in the way she wanted to. And please note that it doesn't really mean that the woman, you know, in any relationship is always correct. But what I'm saying is this, an apple will never fall far away from the tree. Okay? So I believe that what we should be looking at is what is the position of the father? You see, God was able to trust Abraham in Genesis 18, 19. Pardon me, because I'm also a person. In 18, 19, he says, I know Abraham that he will instruct his children after what I have commanded. And you remember that even what um, Mrs. Adan just um, told us about book of Proverbs in 22 and 6, train up a child. Train up. To train means to show a child an example. To show, I bet the father has not been able to show the example of what a son should be like. Uh, I, let me even help your imagination here. I think we need to go and check what the father's characteristic uh, character is and attitude is. We, we, if we go down to what the father actually does we will understand what and why the child is being affected in that way. Mm. So I want to say this as a father, as a father, you were positioned in the family. Thank God for our mothers. Thank God for our mothers like Mrs. Ajani that will go and kneel down for the husband and the children and say, please come. Hey, if you meet other women that you know their firebrand, Okay, yeah, you understand what I'm talking about. But the reality is this as fathers, we need to understand that we are the actual foundation of everything that happens in our family. Period. 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 That's why, even when they are, you know, when the, the Bible was describing marriage, it says, therefore, a man will leave. A man will leave, he will leave, meaning that he will leave his comfort zone and begin to now redefine his own life himself. I want to start, first of all, with the father himself. How much of an example has he been to that child? Before I now come to the child, because it is how much of the example the father has been to the child that the child will turn out to become. Now, listen... I believe train up a child does not mean you should beg a child or lure a child or try and cajole a child. A father is an instructor. Even now, I have a saying that we were all called to the race. Some stand by, or should I say many stand by and watch. Some walk. A few run. But only loners fly. The reason why men, the reason why this boy has not been able to become a high flying child in life is because there is no feather in his wings. Hmm. There, there are no feathers, meaning that the, there is nothing called value that has been added to him. I am sure this boy have had to pick things up by himself because there was no fatherly figure example. No wonder he was he would prefer to join a bad gang than to do, you know, to, to listen to what the mom was saying. All right. A father is a trainer, and as a trainer, you are more or less like an instructor. I mean, by the grace of God, you know what pilots do. Mm -hmm. Pilots don't have teachers. 
your teachers are admonishers, but your instructors, they are people that instruct you. They are your trainers. You want to fly? Do you want to be a pilot? And you want to fly this plane? Press this button. If you don't press the button, the plane is not moving. So I believe as a father, I know this may sound a bit, um, you know, very, very harsh, but as a father, God and what ever circumstance has positioned you to be a father of a child as an example and it's just like the oil that was flowed that was poured on the head of aaron that flew to the hems of his garment so i believe that i am narrowing on the father first before i even talk about the child because no matter what the what the mother does you can hear what our mother ajani just said now she will go back to the child and try and do the let's go out together let's take a bike ride together where i come from bike ride <laughs> anyway but the right the reality is this that without a perfect example a child will seem to look for another every child wants to be like somebody hmm. every child and do you know the funniest thing? That's why when you see them, they have superheroes. If you watch what they watch in when they are children, my son, bless him now, you know, he watched Power Rangers. He, he did, um, there was one like that, Ben 10, that will turn into... <laughs> it's true. One day, I, I, I told him off. And he used to have that Omnitrix watch like that, that could glow in the, in the dark. So I, I told him off and he disappeared. So I went to look for him after I didn't hear him for a while. And I saw him in the corner of his room. And I saw the Omnitrix green. You can imagine entering a dark room and the green this thing was mm -hmm. the, the green light was now flashing. So I shouted the living daylight out of him in order to, to cast any kind of demon that want to enter him. I shouted it out of him. And he said, what are you doing there? And he shook. He says, dad, I'm, I'm changing to Ben 10. Uh, so they, I'm, I'm like you better get out of there every child wants to be like somebody and the very first prime example a child must always look up to should be the father if a father cannot be a child's superhero then i believe that that particular father needs to go back and restart and re-strategize again number one go back to god what is my purpose as a father? Number two, like Mommy Ajani said, listen to your wife. I am the head. I am the head destroys the family. We know you are the head, but listen. I, nobody can tell me what to do. That's why the child is like that. Anyway, let me stop there because there are many points I've, I've got here. Um, and I'll leave the floor for you, madam. Yeah, thank you very much, Pastor Bishon. I told you you're going to hear a lot of things from here. Honestly, this particular episode we're doing is going to help a lot, thousands of parents out there. Even though, the, the, you know, we don't have much right now, but I know so many people will still go back and watch it just because of the misconception of the child. That's why we are just here, but it doesn't really matter because people are still going to be blessed. I thank you very much, Pastor Bison. I always know and always rely on your knowledge that you, in fact, you, you, you are what you are preaching. And I really, really know you for that. Thank God for fathers out there. Yeah, you are the head. God, God will never, in fact, God will never allow the devil to make you the child. But we have our responsibility as the father that we're supposed to be doing when children are being trained. There's a lot of things daddy and mommy has to do at home in order to bring up the child in the way of the lord it's not easy like i said and i will continue to say that it is only when god gives us the advantage and the ability the opportunity the grace that is when our child no matter what we train him or her they will be able to grow in the way of the lord but all this thing we still need to do our own part as parents and as christians because we want them to make heaven that's the most important thing. They must make heaven, not because of the things that we are or our location, but because we are in America or because we are in UK or because we are in one way or the other, Canada or something. Uh, 
Let okay, it's it's already in work. Let let them do what they want. No, we must not do that as Christians. We must be very very careful. Let me call our Father in the Lord. Uh, who is the pastor of the house today to talk about the problem that we are treating. That is to say, the case study in this home, the father is not cooperating. It's only girls that she be he believe that they have to train, not the boys. Why? What is the, the, the spiritual implication? What do you think we can still do? Uh, I'm going to call uh, our daddy, Pastor Arosi, to minister to us through this. Thank you, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mama Drama. Yes, sir. That's what I call at home of this time. Pastor Bishop, God bless you. The Lord will continue to increase your wisdom. Amen. Sister Tokwe, it's nice to see you again after many, many years. <laughs> That was very, very exciting and very intelligent. If I would say, in addition to what you guys have said, you you really have you've really addressed the problem. Sister Jani has a prayer and then Pastor Bison. But I, I would want to look at it that that man need to go back to God, as uh, Pastor Bison has said. He was he has been far away from God to the extent that he doesn't know his responsibility as a father. He has not realized that he's a steward of God's heritage. He's not doing that. The children must not be allowed to know there is a division between the parents. Otherwise, they'll be playing one against the other. Those days when our kids were small, when your child comes to you and say, Daddy, I want to do this, did you tell your mom? She said, yes, I told her. What did she say? She said, no, well, it's no. no. Because if you allow, if you indulge, or you source of preferential treatment, you are creating a problem in the family. This man needs to go back to God to know what his responsibility as a father are. There are many of them. There are many of them. He's supposed to give leadership uh, uh, role, play that role in the family to lead them at the altar and all these things from where you will see what he is supposed to be doing. When uh, there's this proverb in my dialect that if you are roasting yam and you keep the yam by the fire, it's not turned. Mm -hmm. What will happen to it? Get, if it's burnt, guess what? So you have to turn the yam every now and then to make sure that one part does not receive attention more than the other part so that it can be a complete, well-done yam. And the same thing raising children. Every area of their life needs some attention. We don't have to play. Uh, uh, one thing I've come to realize that in our society, the way we raise our children back in Africa is different from here. Mm -hmm. we have we have to be very careful how we handle it. But that, that does not mean we have to be negligent. That does not mean we have to allow unbridled freedom. That does not mean you have to play the role of friend. No, you are not a friend. You are not your child, your son's friend. You are his, parent, his father, his parent. And that distinction must be made properly that I am not your friend. Friend can allow anything, but their father or parents must. There are times when you have to put your feet down. No, you are not doing that. I was talking to a friend about three days ago. His children they are still in his house, some of them 20 years old, and one of them, I think, 21. He said, The moment I ring bell in my house, they must come down for prayer. Mm -hmm. If you are leaving my house, you must come down for prayer. There are certain things as a parent you just have to lead up. Children learn by example, like uh, some of you have said. If they don't see you doing it, well, how will you tell them that this is what they need to do? Mm -hmm. I cannot forget many, many years ago, our son, our last son, we were traveling to Nigeria and I wore a shoe that was very, very tight in my leg. 
I was very I feel very uncomfortable. So I removed my shoe. The next thing I saw was that Isaac was removing his shoe. <laughs> and I said, What are you doing? I said, What are you doing? You remove your shoe. He said, Yeah, but you remove, you remove your own. He didn't know why I removed mine. Mm -hmm. He saw me, I did it. Therefore, it's the right thing for him to do. That's exactly what I'm talking about. The lamb, by example, we have to model the kind of character, the kind of example we want to see in them. Where this stage is now, that the boy is going with, uh, the, two, uh, the two of you, Pastor Bison and Sister Janine, I said, it will take a lot of prayer and fasting to be able to bring the problem back to state, to, to life. The father particularly, because he is the one that has to apologize to the boy to say, I misled you. I'm not treating you the right way. This is what we're supposed to be doing. And so when he is convinced and converted, he'll be able to convince and convert his boy that he has misled him. And he has to come, they have to come back. There are principles of raising kids in the Bible that uh, Pastor Bison has said, and uh, the practical example of this journey that we have to follow. And so we don't have to allow things just to, yeah. You say you only choose a guest you train. What they will tell you that the boy doesn't need to be trained. You, uh -huh. want, to you want to spoil him for the wife you will marry. You are raising the guests, training them so that they can be better wives and good homekeepers to their husband. So you are spoiling your own son so that it will be a problem to the wife that you're going to marry. And that's not uh, acceptable. So I think they need to start from the basic. Uh, Pastor Bishop said if the foundation is, uh, well, what will the righteous do? Well, the righteous can pray. They have to resort to praying and fasting and helping people and calling people to come and join them to be able to pull down the stronghold that has been built in the life of this body by the dad, because he's the number one person that built that stronghold. And God, it's not impossible for God to, you know, to visit the family and uh, hear their prayer and restructure things in the house. But you have to start from the basic. That's uh, my contribution for now. Thank you, Daddy. God bless you. Uh, people of God, I know you people are blessed with the few, you know, case study that we have already treated. Like I always tell people, we are training only girls so that they'll be good in their husband's house. But we forgot that this particular train people, we go back to the boys that we refuse to train and they will bring problems, just like Daddy Anansi said. There is nothing, in fact, we, we, that is why it is always good not to have a favorite among your children. You don't just, even if you have somebody, because you know, children differ. Even if you know that this particular person always listens to you and this one doesn't listen to you, it is not our right to be, you know, oh, this is my child. This is your child. This is my own child. We always do that. We're still going to discuss a lot of things. And we, at the end of the day, we are going to give solutions to how do we think everything will be able to work for us. Because we want these children to make heaven. We don't just want them. We, we you know, Everybody is responsible. If we don't know that, everybody is responsible to give a can of that child that the Lord releases to your bosom. We are going to give a can. And that is why we have to try our best. Because if we are just like caretakers, we are not the owners of those children. We are just caretakers. And when the Lord asks you to be a caretaker of a boy or a girl, you will need to give an account. How did you do it? Did the child grow in the way of the law, or we are just careless? Or we are running after dollars, we are running after pounds, we're running after naira, we are running after money all the time. And we don't have that time. There's a lot of things that are wrong in this particular home. And I'm very sure they are not the only one. There are so many people out there that their boys is something else. They do the things that they, they want to do. They join dance. And we are Christian. At times, ministers of God, children. At times, so many things that we, we, we take responsibility in the church of God. And our child is going somewhere else. We need to repent on this. And I'm very sure... By special grace of God, before we finish today, we are still going to expose a little on what to, you know, not to be ignorant of. Because as we Christians, we are praying all the time, we are spirit-filled, 
we, we fast, we pray, but our child is not a good example of faith. You know, we, are, we, we cannot be proud of them. Oh, whose child is that? We'd be hiding just because we started very wrongly. Or maybe we neglect certain things that we're supposed to have done even when they were young. So we are going to another round now, and that is the last wrap we're going to do. And by special grace of God, if you have any question, maybe you are on live right now or you are on playback, make sure you write your question. Just get it ready. But people that are here with us today, I told you we have this time uh, change in America. And that is why some, some people, they, they don't know that we are online, even though I try to pass the message. But all the same, I know they are still going to play back because automatically this channel is blessing a lot of soul. If you are on this special channel with us right now, I want us to, you know, I want you to help me share. Just share to as many people as possible. You know, you never can know. This particular thing will be a blessing to so many people. And I'm very sure you will be blessed as you are sharing. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And don't just do that. Press the notification button so you don't need to know anything because YouTube will remind you when we go live or when we drop any video. And I pray the Lord will continue to bless you. We need to work together in harmony as Christians. We need to train our children in the way of the Lord. We must not lack. No matter what we are pursuing, maybe money or anything, we must make sure the assignment God gets wrong. We have to do it diligently and we have to do it perfectly. But I'm going to, maybe there is also already a mistake in training our children. It's never too late. For children of God, it's never too late because we can still come back to the throne of grace and ask for mercy. And the Lord Jesus will help us. So I'm going back now to uh, all our guest speakers to. Generally, we are going to just advise people generally in case you find yourself in this problem or even worse. Or maybe your own is even the girls in your house. The boys are okay. The girls are not okay. What can we do? How can we get out of this as a Christian? Because I said we're going to give account of everything that we do to our children. And that's why we must be mindful. We must not, it's not going to be only dollar, dollar every time, morning, night, evening. We are at work. We don't have time for these children. We, we just ask them, oh, just sit down there and do something. By the time these children, by the time they grow, it will be a serious thing. Just like this, the, the, the thing happening in the life of these people. You know, the, the, the child is already shoplifting. He's already being reported in a bad thing. He has joined bad gang already. It needs a special grace of God. Special grace of God to get him out of this mess. But I tell you, with God, all things are possible. Don't lose hope in anything, no matter what the situation may. And that's why we are bringing this particular topic up, so that we can help as many people as possible down there. Because your child needs to be a good representative of your family. It needs to re in fact, remain in your legacy and be able to pronounce to oh, this is the child of Sister Lagwaga. This is the time, the, the, the child of uh, daddy something. That is uh, the testimony we wanted. So I'm calling on Dickness the, uh, Topper again. What general thing do you think people should do at this particular point in time? When this man, the, this sister is having problem, the husband is not yielding. In case, maybe, and some other problem, maybe the Lord minister to you, just talk about it generally about how to get out of this mess. You know, we as believers, we still have the hope that with God, all things are possible. And when we realize our folly, we can still go back to God and seek forgiveness from God. And how do we get the husband to, to help us? How do we get the wife to be in, in consideration? Even what, what, do, what do they do? How do they get out of this? Because I know a lot of parents are out there and they're having this problem and they cannot even talk to their pastor about it. Because they'll be thinking the pastor will blame us. Well, what have you been doing? Well, what are you, why did you neglect? They will want to keep mute. But don't keep quiet. If you have that problem, speak out. I always encourage people to speak out on this channel. Please speak out. Seek help. And when you seek help, you will get solutions. So, Dickness, Dr. Uh, let's roll it from you. The summary for Thank all you. parents out there. God bless Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. I know our time is fast spent. Um, so, just talking about this present case study. I know if all things were, you know, the way it's supposed to be, the dad is doing their part, the mom is doing their part, it makes it a lot easier to be able to raise up godly kids. But in a case where maybe one of them, maybe in this case, you know, the dad is not doing what he should be doing, then the other person has to pick up the slack. 
because we do know even there are homes where we have just one person that the Christian, the other one is not. The Bible says women by our behaviors, we can win the other person over. We know there are people that are doing even, they're, maybe they're nominal Christians, you know, but they do raise up successful children, but not necessarily godly. And then we have single parents, just the mom or just the dad, they still raise up children that are godly. So in this particular case, even though the daddy is not doing what he's supposed to do, and like you said, it's going to take God for, to bring him back. You know, it, it, how nice would it be if the daddy takes off his position and responsibility? But while you're still praying that God will turn him, that's why the woman has to play like two parts. One, you know, you're not, you not condemning your husband because you're not just making the matter worse, but then you have to be the example that the child needs to follow. You know, you have to be the one doing the prayer. You have to be the one setting the boundaries in love so that the child can have something to look up to. So even if it's just, um, you know, when, when things are the way they're supposed to be, of course, you, you already have like boundaries and limitations you set to the kids. And you said for the kids, you know, there's um, correction that has to be on time. You don't leave it. If so your child says something to you, you don't allow it to go by. Of course, you correct them immediately. That's not how to talk to your parent, you know. You, 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 you can do that. But if the dad is always coming to say, oh, don't do that, you know, don't, that, that means we have to find a way to be able to be that example. That's why I was thinking you just have to find a way to reach your son or to reach the other uh, child that is not, you know, get, getting the kind of training or the example from the parents. In this case, from the daddy, you have to look for a way to be able to set those kind of boundaries for the child. That's why you have to find, you know, time, find a way to spend more time with the child, you know, let them know what it's supposed to be. And not necessarily like you're, because this is a kind of tricky situation. You're not condemning the daddy, but you're, you know, you're seeing reason together. This is what the Bible says. That's why you have to try and restore the altar. I don't think he will come and say, don't pray in the house when he's not as if it's like, it wasn't even born again Christian, but you can still bring that back. When you start from the book of Proverbs alone, that when you come together on the, uh, uh, on the prayer altar in the house, you take a passage from the book of Proverbs, there's a lot to learn from it. You share it, use it as, as an example. These are children are supposed to behave, you know, bad, evil, evil communication corrupts good manners, you know, as a man thinketh and is as so easy, you know, all those kind of things, you know, hopefully by the grace of God, you know, when you restore that kind of order in the house, you know, God is respected, you honor the altar of the Lord, that will be, that, 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 that can be something for them to hold on to. And then you too, as a mother, whatever you can do, because I, I'm just looking at this particular boy, you know, they, they can go to either way, you know, you can push him out and it's gone. And then you're even praying more for him to come back, you know, but there has to be a balance. You know, when you come together, this is what is good. This is what is bad. I don't like what you're doing. This is what's going to happen. You know, these are the things I want you to do. And you get him. Hopefully, maybe he'll let you know what the problem is. But you, you, you keep him busy. And then you show the example that you can show to him. And then encourage him. And by the grace of God, he will come back and be what he's, I mean, what he's supposed to be. Like I said, I really wish, you know, it was a kind of the home that is supposed to be where we get our children, you know, we correct them. We lead them in the way of the Lord, you know, we set limits for them, you know. But if there's a problem on one side, the mom has to pick up the slack and it'll be the example that it only needs and um, just, just, just do it. You know, I've seen some fathers, you know, they'll be like, I don't want you to domesticate my son, but every, if so, every son to have my, I have an only boy to his mommy's boy, but he, he does everything he has to. Not just the sisters, just cooking, cleaning, you just have to, you know, it's, that's the way it's supposed to be. So hopefully I know God can God can help them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I am very sure a lot of people are blessed by what our dignity just said. In fact, it is awesome. We thank God for your life. And we know you are going to be a wonderful testimony to your generation. And you continue to be relevant in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, just like how we always are, that, uh, you know, boys, we always be boys. But traditionally, as a, you know, where we grow up for, if you, even if a woman did not give back to a male child, it's a problem of his own. And when you give, give back to, in fact, it's a, always a special thing. It needs the grace of God for parents to train the both part the same way. It needs the grace of God. Some people with so passion, oh, is my son? No, don't touch my son. No, don't. We have already started dividing the home. Pastor Bison, I really want you to talk as a father, you know, concerning this. In case, I, I know, uh, you know, some, some of us, we have one boy. Some people don't even have a talk. Even in case we have one boy, do you 
stress more on the boy thinking, oh, oh. I remember in, in my own home, we have only one boy. But when my mother was alive, I remember everything she taught us how to do in the kitchen was also used on, on the only boy that we have. No, no, no partiality. Uh, but there's a lot of things that is happening in homes right now whereby, we, you know, parents are favorite. You know, this is my son. Uh, the, the other one looks so bad. No matter how the child is doing, it doesn't really matter to the other one. This might be a problem. I really want Pastor Obishan to touch on that. You know, favoritism, calling my my son. This is my, you, you, you are the son, you are daddy's child. You are mommy's child. Do we not create enmity in between children? or oh, because it, it can, it, it will be part of it too. I'm very sure by the time we do question and answer, we're going to press on so many things. We're just doing general thing right now. There are so much into training of our children in the way of the law, but I know we will just try a little bit today. Pastor Bishon. Ah, thank you, Ma. I hope I don't become the target of many men today after what I'm going to say. <laughs> Uh, let me first of all say that I am um, born from two very unique people. One is from the Egun side in Lagos State, and the other one is an Igesha man. Okay, the, my dad is an Igesha, the one, my mom is an Igbo. Um, you can imagine what, from both sides, one thing I have learned is that you have to be very, very strict. Uh, they call it Agidi Igesha. But let me just go straight to the point. First of all, I want the, the man to understand that there is a problem. You see, the reality is this, that um, thank you very much, Ma, for... Ah, mommy Ajani, you're a very good... You're a very soft mommy, you know. Um, first of all, they, they need to, first of all, realize the man needs to understand that there is a problem. You see, his inability to understand there is there is a problem blinds him to how to get to so, the solution. It is when you, you see a problem that is being realized is being half solved, as they, they say. All right. Um, and I think that's number one thing that needs to happen. I'm going to just make my points quickly clear. Number two thing is this. I'm still talking about the father. While you, the mother, you are doing your best, I will come from a very, very strict, straightforward side. Okay? Number two thing is this man needs to start presenting himself as a man that lives by principles. That lives by principles. A father that does not have a time to get up in the morning. And at 10, 10, 12, 11, 30, he's still tiny rapper and chewing through his stick. Pardon from where I'm coming from. What do you expect the child to learn from that kind of, you understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A father that is never up and doing can never show a child how to be hardworking. Mm -hmm. Again, I think it's better we go to the foundation of the job the father does. Okay? Because that will go a long way to determine what has really rubbed on the child. Mm -hmm. All right, the father himself has to live while the mother is trying her best to make the father understand and is trying to cover the father up. I personally, I, I I'm a man. I don't, I don't. As men, we tell ourselves, "You are wounded. You are wounded." You understand? I, I, while you women, you are good at saying, "Ah, don't worry. It's it's not a wound, but it's just a scar. It's just." Uh -uh. But as men, we tell ourselves, "Boy, you are wounded." Okay, and I will tell men this day. That, listen, First Thessalonians 5 and 8 says, a man who is not able to provide properly for his household is worse. I don't, I don't feel that. Okay? Part of the things a man should provide for his household is not just money, not, you know, not gadgets. Part of the things a man majorly provide for his household is number one, good example. A man should provide good example for his family. Okay, your children, I will say this later, your children does not have to enjoy everything you are instructing them to do. They will enjoy it as they go along. I, my dad, I told you he's an Igesha man. He taught me how to always be, to, to follow God. 
okay? My dad will wake you up in the middle of the night and he will kneel down with me. Let's be praying. You don't understand what the man is saying. You don't, I don't even know. One day I told him, that I said, that I don't understand. He says, you will understand one day. Put your head down. And when my dad does like this, um, you know, you know what that means. <laughs> you know, my, my, I, I told my son and my, my children, I told them one day we were going to church, say, dad, you know, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, um, I, I'm not getting along as we are doing. The, I, don't worry. You'll get along when we get there. When we get there, you'll get along. You don't, have, there's no debate about it. Okay. Um, number three thing, number three thing I want to say is this. The parents should be very ready to seek help. You see, mm -hmm. seek help. Get counseling, especially the man. Get counseling while the mother is trying her best. And I want you to know that this does not literally go down for only male child. Okay? What I see in that family is that one is got preferential treatment more than the other and has ended up becoming the problem of the family. Mm -hmm. I know, you know, I have a vivid example where the dad never allowed the only girl to go into the kitchen will fight the wife because this girl is the only girl in the family. Hmm. Okay. And you can imagine what that girl will have turned out to. Hmm. Okay. So I, I, we've met people like that. Get counseling, get help. Okay. Why did I say get help? If you could do it in the first place. You won't need help. Okay? So get help. Number three thing is this. Or number four thing is this. Be open to criticism. Mm. All right? I'm not saying accept all criticism or take it as a law because there are some criticism that just wants to run you down. Okay? They that compare themselves with themselves are not wise. Some people just want to compare their children with their, your children. Don't allow that but be open to criticism when somebody comes to you and says that ah um i saw a new shoe with um your son and i know that he normally wears one shoe like that to school he used to wear just his black sandals to school how come he's one trainers today don't say what is your problem what you should say is thank you i will look into it because the things that you overlook in a child will end up becoming that child's habit and character. Mm -hmm. I know of a story um, back in my country when there was harsh measures or harsh penalties for ham robbers. At the point where this ham robber was to be executed, he says, call my mother. He says, what is your last story? He says, call my mother. I want to talk to her. And as the mother came, he says, come, I want to tell you something in your ear. And the boy beat the ear of the mother off. He beat it off, literally. And they said, why? He said, that will teach this woman a lesson to always listen when people tell her some things about her other children. The day I used to bring other people's pencils back home and other people's things back home, she overlooked it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, please, be open to criticism. Number four thing is this, that they need to start doing, is to help expose their child help to like um mommy ajani just say, said expose him you see what you expose a child to that child is more likely to become the child was more exposed to gangs and violence that is why he's now turning into that particular way okay expose him to something more positive like you said Expose him to how he feels like when he helps someone. Talk to him about, you know, what a better future will become. In fact, you can expose him to a point to taking him to a psychiatric um, hospital. God forbid. And make him understand that, listen to me, what you see in the hospital there is because of people that have gone down one way. Okay. Many people, by what they, they change their mind by what they see, okay? Expose them. Then number six, thing, I don't know what point is that, but another point I wrote is this. Learn to confront your children. Learn to confront your children. Now, I know that mommy Adani said, always confront them in love. But where I come from, 
<laughs> okay, like I said, me, I'm, you know, there was one day, and I know this may sound a bit funny, you know, because we are in Europe or in America or in this advanced country, uh, you know, and even back home now, everybody is now trying to adopt a culture that has never, we've seen that it has not worked very well. Mm -hmm. One day I was talking to, I was having a chat with my children, or my son to be sincere, he's a good example for me. Um, I, I, and he was like that, you know, this is, um, this is UK. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me say what I said in Igun for him. You know, me, I, I'm, a very, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the elderly. Okay? Do you know what I did? I took him outside. I said, come. Outside my door. UK. Inside my door. I leave it to that. I leave it to your own imagination. And do you know, from that day, he realized that no matter how the yeah I may I know as soon as he steps through the door, he shapes up. Hello, Dad. A child must have somebody that he's afraid of. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you to abuse your child. Please don't get me wrong. But for you to be in a situation where your child will be doing something negative, and for the fact that they called your name in your child's ear and he's not able to sit up. My wife is one of the coolest people. She's just like you, Mrs. Ajani. She's like, oh, you know, she's loving and everything. But as soon as she mentions to my children, I'm telling your dad, ah. In fact, the children will come and say, take my life and let it be. <laughs> because they know I can give you everything you want. I will do, I will, in fact, I will go bankrupt for anything you want. But I will never allow you to be irresponsible. And that, to the glory of God, has helped my daughters and my son. My daughter, my first daughter became the first colored girl that became the head girl in our school. Just because of those kind of attitude. Same thing with her. In fact, because of her, they had to choose her sister. My son in another school was made the head. Now, listen, is I'm not trying to use them as examples, but I'm saying a lot of times, no parents want to be harsh on their children. But do you know what? For you to turn your car to move in the direction that it has to go into, you will have to apply force. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. God bless you. If we continue like this, in fact, we won't even stop. There's a lot of things. I told you there's a lot of things that we can learn from this training, our children in the way of the law with that of the parenting. Oh, my God. This is awesome. And uh, well, we don't have much time. But all the same, I, by special grace of God, next week we are coming back to answer all your questions. So if you if you are doing playback or maybe you are live, automatically get your question ready. And by special grace of God, we're going to deal with that. And that will expose us more to how we are able to train our children in the way of the law. So I will ask my daddy now, Pastor Aronsi, to do the summary of today's episode. At times, people might be thinking, maybe it's a spiritual problem that is affecting this particular home. You know, uh, maybe it's the work of the witches and wizards, but automatically we already figured that the, 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 you know, the foundation was wrong and a lot of things has happened. But all the same, I just, one daddy to just a little bit of uh, maybe spiritual aspect of it concerning if this particular problem is happening in homes, maybe so maybe it might be the girl, it might be the boy, it doesn't really matter. But because we have the case study on the boy, it does not mean the girls also might not have problems. I just wanted to just summarize the whole thing, you know, concerning people out there, maybe they are having problems. Uh, maybe the children wrongly, they are going another way. What do we do? How do we help them? Because I know so many people are out there, even though their parents refuse to say, they refuse to seek help. Just like Pastor Bison said, they, they just need to seek help. Because if you keep quiet, my mother would used to say, if you keep quiet, your problem will keep quiet with you. But when you open your mouth, please, like, me, oh, this is the problem that's happening. People will be able to come to your aid. Either they pray with you or maybe somebody has a, a, a advantage of talking to that son or maybe the daughter. There's something will be done because we want to be proud of our children. When when they say, oh, that's the girl going, that's the mother of 
that's the mother, that's the father, that's the proud father. We always want to do that. But there's a lot of work we need to do just before we get that testimony. So, Daddy and Rossi, please, over to you. Um, for people out there that are still having problems with their girl, their, their boy, and they are in this situation right now, how do they get out of it? God bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor Vista and Sister Tope Ajani. Uh, they said a lot of things that we can put into practice if they were listening. A lot of things they have said, if they implement them, there will be changes in the family. But as we are ranging up, I want to suggest that one, the family should have more family time, communication. Mm -hmm. They can sit together and bring issues. I will suggest uh, there are movies that are specially made by Cross, I think Crossroad and some other the family oriented uh, ministries for training children. They can, it's not for entertainment purposes, but they can bring the those old films home, sit down together and watch it, analyze it, and see how did this problem come? What did they do to solve it? They need to do that in this family. The man should be alive to his responsibility. God did not make mistake when he says man and woman should come together. They each of them have role to the children, the girls that we are saying that are being trained, they are good. It's the wife. It's the work of the wife that is training them. The man is a lover. He can't remove himself. I don't want my children to blame me. I want to be in their good book. No, that like I said, you don't have to be their friends. You do what is your responsibility as the head of the family, as the father to the children, like uh, Pastor Bison said. But at the same time, we are in a different environment. We have to be very careful. We have to ask for wisdom of God to be able to raise these children. Uh, if we want to do it the way we were trained or the way we were brought up, we will end up in problem. Mm -hmm. uh, if we listen to news, if we read issues, I mean, things that are happening, these children, they have a way of communicating with them. That's one thing again. We have to know what where what web page they go. The popular one that we know, they don't use those ones again. They have the underground where the places where they talk to themselves. They advise themselves. Is that what your old man is doing? This is what you're gonna do for him. You're gonna teach themselves all kind of horrible things. But with the help of God, with prayer and uh, commitment on both sides they will be able to get these children somewhere. If they can implement issue of, okay, we want to memorize this scripture. Find, like somebody, I think she's uh, talking about proverb. Find some proverb that has, one of the things we taught the little boy when he was very small, I think it was about three of us. Do not join the multitude to do evil, to do wrong. Yes. He knows that at the back of his head. If people are ganging up, you don't join them. So they can find some scripture like that and tell them to memorize and reward them if they do it. Once it enters into their spirit, it will begin to shape their behavior, their character. The man himself, we will see the road where he's supposed to be doing as the head of the family. If he can memorize it, he should also should get rewarded at least because he has neglected that for a long time. Now, if you want to come back, it's, it got to be. It, it can be done. Okay. Uh, the role of the of the parent, like the just of wash the hands, wash the two hands together to raise the children. Mm -hmm. But no decision. Don't give room for people to, for children to know that you can place your play your dad against your mom or, or your other way around. Don't make your don't make your partner to be like a wicked one before your children. Uh, it's only it's the wicked one. He doesn't like you. Don't, no, she is because of, he or she loves them. Doesn't want them to turn out to be bad. That's why he or she is doing what he's doing. I don't see any parent that will intentionally hate the child that he brought into the world. Yeah. But because it depends on the way we handle them, or we do it. That but we don't have to just. Uh, uh, I want to be Mr. Good Man with my children. No, you will fulfill your responsibility. The pastor Christian says something. If your child is doing something, eh, okay, wait until 
your dad come. Uh -huh. So what, what will happen? Okay, that, that man. Uh -huh. if, you, if your name does not tell your child that, hey, when your dad come, uh, no, 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 please, mommy, don't tell. Okay, I will change, I will change. If that is not there, and then you have something. Even if you don't beat, even if it's only the look, yeah. and you look yeah. at them like this, you, yeah. you leave meaning into your eyes and say, no, trouble is coming. And then they will form into shape. So they can go back and begin to visit these areas and they start from the basic and begin to build up. God will help them to change their family the way it's supposed to be. And if other parents also are there, to learn some of these things that we have talked about today. Well, if you have started or if you are not started, if you are going to raise children, just play back these things we have said. And you see a lot of lessons you can learn how to raise your family. And Amen. You give them, you give people later in life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank I'm you, about. thank you, thank you, Daddy. God bless you. I'm very sure a lot of people will be blessed on this. Even if you are not yet married, you are going to get married one more day. And you need all these things. There are some things that we don't even know when we were growing. But thank God for our lives that we are able to correct a lot of things around us right now. And I'm very sure you are blessed already. If you are doing the playback automatically, sorry for not informing you because the time change in America, that is why it's been affected today. But all the same, I know you are still going to play back. So um, we have heard a lot of things our fathers and our mothers said. And I really want you to work on it. Even if your children are in the way of the Lord and you have you got it right, thank God for you. But for others, please help us share this particular message to as many people as possible. That is why we are doing this to, to, together. It's the work of God. And uh, we are not being paid for it, but all this thing we know that whoever that we touch their lives, they will be blessed. And when they are blessed, there will be rewards from heaven, from you. So if you have not to subscribe, on this particular channel, make sure you subscribe. And don't do the subscribing alone, just press the notification button. So anytime we go live, or maybe we drop any video, you will be able to get it right. And uh, I really thank God for all our guest speakers today. I thank God for the witness, uh, the You are wonderful, and I pray the Lord will continue to be with you, guide you in everything you do, and you continue to be relevant in the sight of the Lord and your children will never go wayward in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for coming and for your time. And I thank God for our pastor. Bison is always there, like I said. Um, he is always our father on this channel. He's always there anytime, any day. You will always see him. He's, even when he's sleeping, you wake him up, he's already he's, he's there. And I pray that Lord Jesus will make you to continue to be relevant in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be found wanting in anything you put your hands on in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you very much for your time and for giving us the ability to hear from you. And for our daddy, daddy, Rossi, the day I started this channel, he has been there. He's always supportive. Anytime, any day I call him, he, he, no excuse, he will just be there. And I thank God for you, Daddy. We are blessed by your ministry. And I pray the Lord will continue to strengthen you, continue to be with you, continue to make you relevant in the vineyard of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. And for a few people that are on the channel right now, uh, like I said, it was because the time of America changed. That's why we don't have enough. But all the same, I still know a lot of people will play back. They will do replay. So, and I will encourage you to write your own comment. Yes, daddy and mommy, they've said a lot of things concerning raising our children. Maybe you have a very, even wonderful experience, or maybe you want to share with other brethren. It would be appreciated if you put it on the comment, because also many people that are watching this channel, they will read the comments as well, and they will be blessed. So whatever you can contribute to other people's life, please make sure you do it. Don't watch this video. Just drop it without putting your comment and try and watch other videos or other topics that we have done in the past and you will surely be blessed. This is where we're going to end up this particular evening. We thank God for the privilege given to us by God that all the things that we started, we are rounding up right now. But I want to tell you this, by special grace of God, next Sunday, the same panel will be here next Sunday to answer all your questions. I'm very sure a lot of things are going through us right now and we'll be thinking, how do we do this? How do we do this? If this one goes like this, how do we, how do we solve it? 
you know, I'm, I'm still going to advertise on that so a lot of people will send their question in. So we're going to do only question and answer on this particular topic like we normally do. And I'm very sure a lot of people will be blessed. So help us share this particular message to as many people as possible. Your church members, your friend, your sister's brother, they need to know about this channel so that we can be able to deal with a lot of things out there. So uh, by special grace of God, next week will be 21st of March. The same time, that is your, your UK will still be 7 p.m. It has changed now, but the, the USA will see at 3 p.m. But for the US, uh, for the UK, it will be 7 p.m. and Nigerian time will be 8 p.m. So that is a new, at least that will give an advantage of being on this. So I know next week will be an improvement. So until next week, when we are going to come together again to answer the question on how to train our children in the way of the law without overparenting, we remain yours. But before we go, like we are Christians, I uh, will give... Um, the, the only mother amongst us the privilege to round up for us for a short prayer as we round up uh, for this episode uh, program. Dick Nestor. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we just thank you for this opportunity you have given us even to deliberate and to share one with another. Father God, we pray, oh my God, that the things that you have taught us, you give us the grace to put them to practice. And we shall see fruits and rewards in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, we pray for homes that are going through difficult situations that are having problems with their children. We pray that God, you visit them all over God, even with your mercy, with your wisdom, with your power. Let there be transformation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our venture, we have anybody that is looking at you for the fruit of the womb. Father, we pray for that you answer them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, it is in you that will live more than ever again. We pray that you continue to give us this grace even to train our children in the way of the Lord, that indeed, oh my God, they will increase in wisdom, knowledge, and stature as Jesus did. And we pray, oh my God, that they will be strong and do exploits for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray that as for us and our house, we will serve you. We worship you. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, I say thank you to everyone that is here. And I pray the Lord will continue to be with us. So until next week, when we are going to meet for our question and answer, remain correctable. Continue to read your Bible. Pray more and speak the praise of the Lord. Bye for now, everyone. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Yeah, you can stop here.